From the CSE Weather Center, Charlie Hall, have a good day. There will be a high tide at 527, partly sunny now, 83 degrees in North Charleston, 79 downtown. And I'm Harv Jacobs, WCSE News. Thank you, Harv. It's 409. We're going to have Charlie Hall back with us in just a minute. We'll be talking about some of the good old days on CSC. 1390 CSE Air Supply, making love out of nothing at all. Well, let's see what we can make out of the traffic situation this afternoon. Here's Sandy Barnes. Thank you, Bill. And right now we've got a problem at Rutledge and the Crosstown because of a disabled motorist. It is blocking a lane of traffic and causing some delays. If you're headed over in that area, expect this delay at Rutledge and the Crosstown because of a disabled motorist. Sandy Barnes, WCSE Traffic Watch. Mr. Weatherman, what does the weatherman say today? Will it be warm with skies of gray? Will it be hot or cold or fair? Oh, what does the weatherman, 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 what does the weatherman? Oh, boy, that must bring back some memories for Charlie Hall, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm sorry to say it does. That, that's sort of mean uh, to bring out those uh, old jingles. Uh, they uh, they, they made so much sense back then, you know. They, they sound so, so really out of place today. Charlie Hall, of course, is our weatherman for CSE and uh, on Channel 5. And uh, your career with the CSE goes back a long ways, doesn't it? A long, long ways. You know, I thought all the dinosaurs were extinct, but I've been <laughs> listening to you parade, parade them by your CSE microphones all day long. Uh, my career began in a CSE studio on top of the Francis Marion Hotel. December, this December will be 40 years ago. And I didn't mean for it to be that long. I just, it, I, it just kept staying. How... How did they discover you and guess you into the business? Well, it, it wasn't a matter of discovery. It was the qualifications then for breaking into radio were uh, willing to, to pretty much start at the very bottom, that is the bottom of the pay scale, and uh, just wait for an opportunity and then, then grasp it. Actually, I began as a control room operator. I had the early morning shift, and we had a, a morning announcer at that time who was prone to be tardy at times, and I would fill in for him, and he gradually became later and later, and I began to bring the microphone in the control room, and tear out some little Reader's Digest jokes and get my own fan club going. And uh, so while he was sleeping, I was slowly getting his job. Was that the Yawn Patrol? Or what? That was the Yawn Patrol. I think that was named during the war, and it carried over after the war and, uh, and uh, was stayed the Yawn Patrol for some time. So you, so this was where you got to be a disc jockey, so to speak. Yeah, we didn't call them disc jockeys in those days. So, I mean, disc jockey sort of a late uh, term. We... We were announcers, and we held one hand over our ear and spoke in a deep voice and sounded very so-so. Of course, whatever. nowadays everybody thinks of you strictly in terms of a weatherman. How, how did you progress from, from uh, operator to, you told us how you got from operator to announcer. How did you get on into weather? Well, the weather thing came uh, with the coming of television. I began to travel around and visit the few television stations on the air in the southeast. And I noticed all the, all the weather segments were sponsored, uh, not all the news segments were all the sports segments and uh, I was fascinated by that aspect of it from a sponsorship mentality standpoint but mainly as I got into studying weather more closely there's a day-to-day -day continuity and a fascination to the story as it unfolds as mother nature provides it for you and uh, I just became very interested and uh, fortunately I had a very good uh, mentor in Mr. John Cummings at the Weather Bureau here he took me under his wing and sort of raised me out there at the Weather Bureau and it just evolved so, as so many things did back then. You did news also, didn't you? Uh, I, did, along the way. I did some news on the radio. I, I, did, I did mainly the, the morning uh, Yon Patrol record show. And uh, in those days, you know, the announcer did about everything that was handed to him. Your fashion he? shows, hillbilly shows, anything that came by, you know. <laughs> Wash the floor. And yeah. I'll, I'll get what was the biggest that. news story that you can recall from that? Well, the first, the one that strikes, comes to mind right away, of course, is the... Uh, is the uh, Old Cup River Bridge, the freighter hitting that bridge that Sunday, tearing out a span, five people, family of five going over. Uh, I believe that was in 46, if my memory's right, and probably isn't because I have trouble remembering what I had for breakfast, but I think it was 46. That was the, uh, I thought, man, if this is radio, you know, everything's going to be this big a news story. We did remotes from that uh, diving operation for several weeks while they're trying to recover the car and the, and the people. What kind of uh, remotes, otherwise than that, what kind of remotes did you do back in those days? Well, for the most part, they were, uh, they were landlines laid to the uh, 
the county hall, I did a whole lot of dance bands. Oh, I got in the, just on the tail end of the, uh, of the big band era. And, uh, you know, I did uh, Stan Kenton, both the Dorsey brothers, uh, these remotes at night from 11.15 till midnight. And, of course, every local announcer to feed the uh, CBS radio network, you know, you just, everyone aspired to that. I think it paid about $12 and a half, but, I mean, look at all the prestige that went with it. I did a lot of those uh, dance band remotes. Enjoy that a whole lot. Any particular memories you want to reflect back on from back wow. and Memories, I don't know. Uh, so many of the really humorous things, as you well know, you have to you have to be here to uh, appreciate, or you have to be in in the business. Uh, and some of them you wouldn't want anybody. Well, to know of course, anyway. there are there are those uh, <laughs> those bleep bleeps that you you best uh, leave lie if people have forgotten them. Um, I can't. Uh, well, I can, I'll relate one very quick one. I, I mentioned I was a control operator. The lady who broke me in, uh, you know, during the war, they used ladies a whole lot. And the lady who taught me the control board, her name was Juanita Atterbury Anderson. I'll never forget her name. And while, while she was teaching me the control room, she opened the door, and there was a ball-peen hammer in the door, in the drawer. And I said, you know, what, what's that for? And she said, that is for the announcers. And, I, and, you know, I asked, what do you mean? She said, a couple announcers here, and if they come in this control, in this control board, I picked this ball peen hammer up, you know, she was serious. And I thought, wait a minute, am I sure I want to get in this business? But she defended herself with a ball peen hammer. Now, I won't mention the two announcers that she was talking about, because they're not here to defend themselves, and uh, that's best they, their name, they'd be remain nameless. But I thought that was a wild, wild place to, to join for a moment. After all your years on uh, doing the weather on the television, now you're back with us on CSC Radio. Glad yeah, to have you isn't back. that strange how you yeah. sort of run the gamut like that? You know, I took... Uh, well, let's see. I was in radio about seven years, and this December will be 40 years. So I guess I've been in TV about 33 years, and you all moved just next door here. So I just sort of migrate over here uh, in the uh, afternoon and uh, evening, and um, uh, it seems strange how you make us. I just took 33 years out to Does practice it? and then come back to uh, radio, which is really my first. Practice and television time. to come back to radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I love about which radio? Which do you like best? You know what? It was so great is to be standing here without a, without a tie, and uh, oftentimes in the early morning when the staff was not around, I used to do that in you know, my undershirt, and people would think I'm well-dressed all the time. Gosh, I love that about radio, because I hate to wear ties and clothes all the time. Charlie, I want to appreciate you taking some time to come over here and talk with us this afternoon, and uh, thanks for being part of CSE. Thank you. I hope you call me back for your 110th anniversary. Will do. Okay. <laughs> 110. It's 423.